FL Studio is one of those DAWs that the more you learn about it, the less you know about it. That's why FL Studio Tips got you covered. Look, so many people nowadays make some effects plugin, and actually, if you think about it, it's usually just about volume manipulation, wet effects, distortion, and momentary effect, so if you reverse something. Because there's not much else to do, right? Audio is two-dimensional, everything is sine waves. Anyway, today you'll learn how to make your effects change in Patcher and how to use some hidden FL Studio tricks to realize your ideas. We'll start by taking one of the loops from our latest Gold Kit Volume 1. And now let's put Patcher on top of it and let me show you a couple of insane tricks that are going to open up your mind at all. So inside of Patcher, usually you would like reverb, let's say, right? So we make it without any high cut, make it super long like this and... And now like all of those effects plugins that you will see on the market have some kind of movement effects. And usually it's just like you can turn up one knob and just like make some kind of LFO tool. What actually we can do inside of Patcher is open a plugin called Fruity Pick Controller. Oh my God. <laughs> Mind blown. So cool thing about Patcher is that every single thing that you have inside of here, every knob in your reverb is triggerable. Triggerable. <laughs> every single knob here is triggerable. So you can use any of those knobs and use anything to trigger those knobs. And in the previous video, I showed you how to use Fruity Envelope Controller to do your own LFO tool, which was also pretty good. And now in Fruity Peak Controller, we have Peak at LFO. We don't have to link it to anywhere. We can just right click output, go to controllers and now choose our LFO. And now whatever we do in here, this will be our trigger and it's here. It's living inside of this red dot. And now what we need to do to be able to trigger something with this, we need to just right click on anything you want to trigger, activate it and link those both guys and look what's happening. <laughs> thing, right? So now we can go to saw, let's say, right click on the speed and set it to, let's say, 8. Right, so now we can actually take the dry all the way down and just make another chain for the dry only. So that will be wet only, wet only reverb, right? And that would be our reverb. Let's go and add delay three. We'll do the same thing, take the try all the way down, can right click on the chains to deactivate it. We introduce some kind of effect like this, and now we can make the wet button activated, and you can link it to the same LFO as reverb. However, I would like it to work a little bit different. So you can right click, save preset as and drag it over. And now we can output LFO, enable it again, and we can just link it to this one. This would be our delay, right? Cool thing is that if you would apply Patcher inside of your mixer channel, if you'd like to save the preset afterwards, it will just not be linked at all. And this is like the drag and drop solution for that. And you will see in the moment what we can actually do with this. Let's also apply Fruity Panomatic. And now we'll activate the pan knob here. And let's duplicate it again, call it pan. And now let's take it as our kind of dry channel, right? And we'll enable the LFO output, and now we can do it randomly, just like this, and set the base to around here. So we have it going up and down. You can set the steps to go a little bit faster, like this. And now we link it to our pan knob. Right, so it goes right, left, right, left, a little bit and randomly. That will create very interesting effect for sure. And now let's get to the next level. We'll add 
Internet Explorer, my favorite delay plugin. <laughs> now we are going to add gross beat. And now let's duplicate the peak controller, call it half time. We enable the LFO and activate the time knob here and choose momentary presets and find half speed here. And we're going to link it like this, link the audio to FO Studio and link the LFO to our time here, right? So it now works like this. However, I want it to work in also saw wave and much slower, let's say 16 steps or even 32 steps and set the pace like this and make it go like that. Let's hear it. And now we have the issue because if we put it like this, it will be all the way dry. That's why we need to instead apply fruity balance and link it here and activate the volume and link the LFO to our volume and leave the dry wet here to 100%. can decrease the volume here. Now what else we can do is duplicate the gross beat and add reverse. Now we duplicate it again, call it reverse. Enable the LFO of course. And now again, we need to use fruity balance to do it like this and activate the volume button and link those guys together and link now this guy to FL Studio. So we have this funny looking chain for now. We need to connect it from FL Studio, of course. And now we want it to work like square, let's say. Let's make it work a little bit faster. And let's reverse the face kind of by taking the volume all the way down and taking the bass all the way up. Now it kind of is a mess. How we can improve it is by on the reverse only apply, let's say, parametric EQ. And now we are making kind of radio effect by making this kind of band pass harshly like that. And maybe like boosting some of the frequencies right here. Now you could also think of applying delay just after the reverse. It always, always works crazy. Let's say in the ping pong mode in time two. Before. And after. You get the idea. Now we introduce wet effects, panning, some volume, pitch, and that's pretty much it. What we could include is some volume automation. We can add Fruity Balance activated, copy one of our Fruity Peak controllers, enable the LFO and link it to our Fruity Balance. And now we want all of those guys go through Fruity Balance first, so we can automate the whole volume of everything and then go to FL Studio. So now what we'll do is kind of make saw shape and make it work faster. The beauty of the whole thing here is that you can now simply save the preset as and use it and improve it over time. So you make it bigger and bigger and you have your own unique processing applied every time you want it and make other presets like this. And if you want our processing chains, make sure to check the links down below. We have tons of amazing processing for vintage dirty kind of stuff. If you make any type of music in FL Studio, this will save hours over time. Now look, this type of effect works especially good on your single instruments. Let's check out how it would sound if we put one of the MIDI harmonies on some piano.
And if you use EQs in linear phase mode, you can usually use the mix knob here. So you don't have any phasing issues. Of course, you can change your LFOs here. If you'd like to learn about Patcher, I've made a full video just about it. I hope that I could show you and visualize you that many things are possible if you're using the right tools and you know how to actually utilize them to 100%. And what we've done today is just the tip of an iceberg, what you can do with stuff you already have in your FL Studio. If you'd like to learn more about FL Studio and get your music to the next level, check our online courses. We've got full beginner course, we've got harmony, upcoming sound design, arrangement, mixing, mastering, a ton of start to finish courses. We also got a community that you can ask for feedback and track your progress together with me and hundreds of other students that want to get to the next level. Make sure to leave a like, comment your next topic idea, subscribe to not miss out when it's coming out, and I see you in the next one.